Hey, how's it going? This is Jeffrey with Inky Johnson right here in Unleash Your Power podcast. And we just wrapped up a phenomenal podcast with Inky. We touch on perseverance, faith, communication, love, respect, and playing a bigger game for other people. Inky. Can't wait for you guys to catch the dialogue. It's phenomenal. Tap in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Unleash Your Power. This is your host, Jeffrey Pinzon. And man, this, this episode is special to me. We just wrapped up a phenomenal event that we just added so much value to people. And right next to me, I have an incredible soul that I've been following this gentleman for years now. And he's been a huge contribution in my life, in my kids' life, mm. in the lives of others. And he has, he has checked me so, in so many ways without him even knowing. So today's a special day. We have Inky Johnson on our podcast. My, my man. guy, my guy, my guy. Thank it's an so honor, much, man. Brother. True honor. Thank you, thank you. A lot for of being respect here. for you, man. It's a true honor to sit with you, man. Thank for you, sure. brother. Thank you. Yes, indeed. So let, let, let's get right into it, brother. Uh, for people that don't know who you are, mm -hmm. right, from our audience, can you tell us a little bit about Inky Johnson, who Absolutely. he is? Absolutely. Like that they get to know you? Absolutely. So, um, you know, obviously husband, father, a former collegiate athlete, um, you know, inspirational speaker, and a servant philanthropist. And just a guy that's trying to make a difference in the world, man, with the gifts, talents, and abilities, author. But I like to just say servant, Jeffrey. Like, I'm a servant at heart, man. But I've done some pretty cool things, I think. I've done some cool things. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I've done some cool things. Yeah. So let, let, let's touch on how, when your life shifted to mm -hmm. a whole different perspective can you touch on what happened in your football career absolutely. and how that impacted your family your loved ones and yourself absolutely you know it's interesting man because you know change often happens in different ways right and oftentimes when people go in search of growth we're just trying to get to the next level like I love this quote it says every next level of our lives demands a new version of us right and so my whole life in my childhood I played football I loved it Loved everything about it. Had aspirations to make it to the NFL. First one in my family to go to college. First one to do a lot of different things. And when I got to college at the University of Tennessee, it was a big deal. And I was in a position to where it looked as if, by all accounts, I was about to make it to the NFL. And in my junior year, second game, playing against Air Force, I went to make a routine tackle and almost lost my life. You know, it ended up paralyzing my right arm and hand, and my career ended on the spot. And so all the dreams, goals, and aspirations that I had for myself, they stopped September 9th, 2006, in the realm of football. But it opened up a totally different avenue and aspect of my life that I didn't even know exist, right? And so it put me on the path of personal development, being intentional about my growth, being an inspirational speaker, communicator. And it's interesting, man, because it came in the form of you know, adversity, opposition, and pain, right? My injury, it brought a lot of pain to my life. It brought a lot of adversity and opposition to my life, but it also brought a lot of happiness and growth to my life. Absolutely. Well, so. let, let me touch on that, Inky, because you, you were about to go pro, right? Mm -hmm. You had the papers, like Absolutely. you mentioned earlier, and that challenge shows up. Mm -hmm. What went through your head at that moment? like? Absolutely. What were some battles that you had, you mm -hmm. had to deal with? It was surreal, man, because I didn't believe it, right? As much as you hear things like your career can end with one hit, it's just that syndrome of that we all live with, like it, it's not going to happen to me. Right? It's just a life, right? Like it's not going to happen to me. Like not thinking that it was going to happen to me, and it did. And I just couldn't believe it. Like I battle, I tell people often, I battled, you know, for like two years after the injury. Even though I got out of the hospital, went back to practice, graduated, I still battled for like two years thinking that I was still gonna be able to return to football. In the back of my mind, it was just a false sense of hope that I was still gonna be able to return to it because I didn't believe that it could end that quick. And so now it speaks to, when I speak to people about just the fragility of life, like not taking what you do for granted because at any given moment, you can have to redirect. You can have to regain plan, right? You can have to retool. 
And so when it happened, it was hard to accept because I just couldn't believe that it could end that quick, right? And so it was, it was a tough pill to swallow, for sure. So what helped you throughout mm -hmm. the process for you to get mm -hmm. to that next level? I remember I had a day, um, Jeffrey, to where I just broke down, man, in our indoor football facility. And, you know, I cried. It was as if on this day I just let out all my emotions that I had been carrying. And on that day, it was like the release mm. to a new chapter. It's like, all right, Inc., ball is done. Close that chapter. Let's move forward. And it was like, find the gratitude in it, man. Just find the gratitude in the moment. All right, you can't play. What's some of the good things that happened as a result of your injury? All right, look around you. Pay attention to how it impacted people. Because the first thing we do when situations happen to us that don't really play in our favor, we often think, like, man, why me? Right. And that's not a bad feeling, right. right? That's natural. Right. Right. We all go through something we're going to. We all want like, the man, best, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. man, why me? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes it blocks the perspective from seeing all of the great things that's transpiring around us. And so when that moment happened to where I was able to release, it also picked my perspective up to a space and place to where I was able to look around me and see how what happened to me started to impact the people I was connected to in a positive way. Wow. So in the mo let me ask you this, because I know like, I was born with a smaller leg, right? Uh, I was always very self-conscious about it. The, you get some type of insecurities in the beginning and how did you overcome those? Because that's tough, man. Absolutely. Like you playing football, about to go pro, being able to use both of your arms, being able to do all the normal things. Mm -hmm. And now you got to adapt, you got to adjust. Absolutely. I remember vividly, man, there's this gentleman called Miles Kovac. He changed my life. Wow. I used to, I used to always play the victim game about my leg, right? Mm. I'll be having a conversation with you, and I'll be like, "Oh man, I was born with a small leg, kinky, mm. and I can, I can't do a lot of things, right? I wow. play the victim." Mm. He literally stopped me. And he's like, "You're full of it." Wow. He's like, "That's your biggest blessing that God gave you. Wow. You're not using it to your biggest advantage." Mm. He's like, "You need to get out of your own way because you could be a bigger contribution to other people." That's good. So, what were some some impacts in your life? Because I know insecurity had to creep in, right? Absolutely. Well, well, Absolutely. That's um, that's good, man. That's good because, like, even when my injury happened, you know, like it totally changed everything. I was this guy that was fit, working out, to going out, and people. The thing that challenged me the most was when I would go out and people would just look at me, right? Trying to figure out what was going on with my arm. Or when I would look up at a person and I caught them looking at my arm and they would look away, that would probably hurt more. That they didn't have the courage or just didn't want to say, hey, what happened? Right. And so for a long time, it was like, man, it started to get frustrating. And I had to understand, like, ink. They're not looking at you trying to shame you. They're not looking at you trying to say things about you. They're genuinely trying to figure out like what happened. Right. Right. And so there's a quote that says, it's not the strongest of species that survives. It's not even the most intelligent, but the one that's most willing to adapt to change. Right. And I had <laughs> I to be willing that. to adapt right to my change in my life. And I adapted. And so when I went out and my spirit was in such a place of peace, I had to get my spirit right first because my spirit wasn't always in the space and place to where I could go out and somebody could look at me and ask me a question about what happened to me and I could perceive that the right way and then have dialogue in a peaceful place. Mm -hmm. And when my spirit got to the place of peace, I was able to go out and when somebody would say, hey man, what happened? Man, football injury. And then we can carry on a peaceful, healthy dialogue. Right. But it took a minute because at first, it was some like, man, what is this? Like, why are people treating me that way? Mm -hmm. But it took a minute. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I was always, I always wanted to ask you that because I know that I, I went through it a lot. Absolutely. The same thing. People will look at me wearing shorts and they'll look at you, yeah. and then they'll look back. Oh, absolutely. Like he didn't see me, and then they'll yeah. that will get you uncomfortable. Absolutely. Like, dude, you yeah. want to take a photo or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, the ego, the mechanism yeah, kicks in, man. right? Absolutely. But you touch on spirit right now, right? Mm -hmm. How has the Lord blessed your life? in? Because you touched on it earlier on stage, how huh? he redirected you and put you in a better position. Mm -hmm. How has your walk with the Lord helped you and helped your family? I can honestly say, man, um, I don't think 
if I wasn't connected to the Lord, I wouldn't have responded the way I responded. Because this was this was devastating, not only to me, but to my family. Like I come from a family, two bedroom, 14 people, uncles going in and out of prison. And so when I finally broke through, after generations of not graduating high school, generations of trying to sell drugs, going to jail, generations of just doing different stuff. When I was able to break through, it was like this hope that was like, oh man, Ink finally made it through. Oh, he's about to do it, right? He's about to make it happen. Grandmother going to church, you know, my grandson Inky, he's about to do this. And then all of a sudden, boom. And it's like, not only did my dreams disappear, like my family's dreams disappear mm. in a moment. Because I always tell people, the idea is often more powerful than the person, right? The idea of Inky Johnson making it from a two-bedroom home, 14 people, first one in his family go to college, made it from this neighborhood to the NFL, that's an idea. That idea is in LA, that idea is in Florida, that idea is in Nevada, that idea is in Boston, that idea is all across the country to where his kids coming up and they're facing the odds. Right? I was just coming up facing the odds. That idea is everywhere. Mm -hmm. right? And so in my family, that idea, when it happened and I got injured, the idea almost suffered for my cousins, for my family members that were coming up the same way I was coming up, that believed, man, when I look at ink, ink made it so I can make it. Mm -hmm. And so when the injury happened, my faith in being connected to something that gave me perspective, that saved me. Mm -hmm. Because I can honestly say if I wasn't connected, I wouldn't have probably responded the way that I responded. It probably would have been a lot of anger, a lot of resentment, a lot of trying to figure out, like, why me? And when it happened, it was a certain level of perspective and a certain level of comfort there because I was already connected to the Creator. Wow. Absolutely. Beautiful. Why did you take on that responsibility? Like you touch on your cousins, they looking up to you, seeing that you're gonna graduate, you're gonna go to college, you're doing all this stuff. Absolutely. Why did you take on that, that responsibility? Because I know in one of your stories and in, in the video that you have on YouTube, you share that you wanted to go to back to your old high school, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Why did you choose to do that? Yeah, man, it was it was very important to me, man, uh, because like. I've always been the type of person to where, like, I'm, 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 I need the action, basically, right? Like, I'm the guy that if they tell us, if all of us are out and we're trying to do something, they look at us and say, man, y'all can't beat them cats. Like, they don't want four state championships in a row. And we look like the bad news bears. I'm gonna be the cat that greets everybody when they get on the bus and be like, hey, we can beat them. Come I'm on. telling you, we can beat these cats. They can't, Jeffrey, they can't see you, bro. Like, I'm that dude, right? I've been that dude my whole life. Even coming up, when people told my family members, like, yeah, that sounds cool. I was the one in the street with my cousins, like, bro, I'm telling you, we can do this. And so when I got transferred across town to go to a school that they promised me a scholarship, promised my parents a scholarship, I was hurt, right? Because my parents agreed to transfer me and I didn't want to go. At the time, I was at one of the lowest performing public schools in the state of Georgia, mm -hmm. not just Atlanta. And so I'm at one of the lowest performing public schools and my parents are telling me, hey, Inc., we can go to one of the best performing schools and they're guaranteeing you a scholarship if you play ball for them. Nobody in our family has went to college, Inc. And I'm like, nah, I can do it from this school. So as a parent, they're like, man, this joker don't know what's best <laughs> for him, right? Like, he's just ambitious, but he don't know. Right. And when they transferred me, I was hurt. But now being a parent, I get it. But at the time I was hurt because I felt as if, man, they don't believe in me. Right. But it wasn't them not believing in me. They were trying to do what they felt was best for, for you. And so when I went to the school, I just didn't go to class. I'm not proud of it, but I didn't go to class. I would just sit in front of the school with a cop. And the cop would be like, bro, just go to class and play ball, get the scholarship. And I was like, I don't want to be here. So you're doing it intentionally. Yeah, you're intentionally like, yeah. So they could transfer me yeah. back to my neighborhood and they did. They transferred me back and I ended up going to college from the lowest performing public school in the state. Wow. And it was a big deal. And after I went to college, kids started going to college because the idea had changed. The it idea, was, oh bro, yeah. we can make it. That's right. Right, we can do it. Ink did it, we can do it. So that's why I always fought hard to get back there 
because I just believed in my heart that I could make it happen. Yeah. That's strong. Absolutely, man. Yeah. That's, that's something that a lot of people won't take on that responsibility, yeah. right? Absolutely. And you took on that responsibility. Now you're change, you change your family's life, right? Absolutely. Your cousins, your cousins. How was that like? How do, how do you feel about that? How? It's incredible, man, because it's like um, you raise the standard and the expectation for the next generation. And in every family, somebody has to be that person that's going to be like, no, nah, it stops here. Just think about if a family has went through several cycles and generations of poverty and every generation comes up and just like, oh, it's just like this. We just live like this, right? It's just, it's the family business. We just struggle. And nobody is like, nah, that's not the family business. We don't have to deal with this. And I was blessed too. I want to say this, man, I was blessed. Sports has been an amazing vehicle for me because it gave me exposure. It gave me a lot of exposure, meaning when I was a kid and I would be going like across town to play in certain games, I would get in a car with my coach and he would take me across town. And I was able to see that people weren't living the way we were living. Now, if I probably would have stayed in my neighborhood, I never would have knew. Mm -hmm. But I was able to go across town as I'm riding to a game and my coach would be intentionally, hey, Ink, you see that house? What you think about that? Ink, you see that? What you think about that? I'll be, man, that's nice. <laughs> you know, like he would take me and get me a steak. I remember he bought me a steak. First time, like I came home, I'm like, bro, I just had a steak. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he was like, you got a steak? I was like, my coach bought me a steak. We're coming up with two bedroom house, 14 people. Like, we just got to eat what gets put on the table, right? Yeah. And it exposed me to a different world. And so, yeah, I was in this environment, but I knew it was more. Mm -hmm. A lot of the kids that were growing up around me, they would hear me say it, but they never saw it. Like, my coach tried to take us to a tournament out of town, and half of the team didn't show up because they didn't want to leave Atlanta, right? And so you're dealing with not only hope, belief, ambition, you're dealing with people that don't want to leave the environment that they were in. Mm -hmm. And so when I was able to do that and change that for my family, it was very fulfilling, man. It was, it was rewarding and it was something that I was extremely grateful that God blessed me with the people to be able to do it. Yeah. I love how you're going out and bringing that back home. Absolutely. Huh? You're bringing that back home. You're bringing the possibilities. You're seeing the vision, what they're not seeing. And now you're being that vessel that is providing that vision, casting that vision, and, 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 and playing a bigger game, right? Yeah, man, because like when you grow up, when you grow up in the hood, right? Like that's what they call it where I grew up. Grew up in the hood. And you hear this as you're growing up in the hood. You hear this, this saying, all right, man, grow up and make it out. Grow up and make it out. Like grow up and get out, right? But if everybody grow up and get out and make it out and nobody comes back, who's going to show? how to make it out, how to navigate out, how to go and do certain things. But also, why not come back and say thank you to the environment that shaped and molded you into who you are? Mm -hmm. Now, every environment you can't go back to because everybody is not happy for you. Right. Right? But understanding how to come back and give back to the places that made you who you are, I think is something that's extremely important and it's a level of accountability attached to that. And so for me, like, I don't believe in the saying when people say, regardless of how you grow up, I don't believe in the saying that when people say, oh, man, you come from nothing. Like, man, that guy, he came from nothing. Or a person might say, man, I came from nothing. I did this. I don't believe in that. Mm -hmm. Right? Because my mother is something. Mm -hmm. My grandmother is something. Amen. Right? And so looking at it from that standpoint and understanding, like, your roots and what made you who you are. Right? The way my grandmother would say it. Don't never get too big for your britches. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Like she'd always say, don't never get too big for your britches. That means don't go out into the world and get the big head, right? No matter how well you do, how much money you make, what type of car you drive, and don't ever get out there and forget the place that made you who you are. And there's kids coming up just like you, right? With the same dreams, goals, and ambitions, just like you had, that you have an obligation to come back and speak to those kids just like somebody spoke to you. Because my coaches didn't have to stop and say, hey, ain't kids, you can do it. And go to bat for me. Like I had people that went to bat for me, right? Like people that went to bat when people was like, you think this kid can make it at a four year college academically because of the school I was coming from. Mm -hmm. And teachers at my school would be like, what, can he make it? 
not only is he gonna make it, like he's gonna crush it. Wow. Like having people like that in my corner, how dare I go out into the world, go go do something great, and don't never come back to that place. Like that'll be so counterfeit of me, man. Yeah. And it gave you a whole different level of responsibility Absolutely. and accountability, right? Absolutely. Because now you were not doing it for you, you were doing it for someone else. Absolutely. It's always a bigger purpose, man. Yeah. If, if it's just about you, you're going to quit. Absolutely. So let's touch on fatherhood, Absolutely. right? How has your relationship with your father shaped the quality of a father that you are with your kids? Yeah. It's, uh, it's been a journey, man, me and my father, because in the early years, we didn't have the greatest relationship because he wasn't present when my mother first had me at 16. And then when my father came in the picture, I wasn't always as receptive to my father as I should have been because I just wasn't there in terms of my growth and my journey. There was a lot of resentment there. And when I started to receive my father and spend time around him, and it opened me up and it helped me grow in ways that I never imagined. Like even when I got injured, I got to see a side of my father I had never seen before. Right, that's one of the things that I'm grateful to God for. I never saw the side of my father that I saw when I got injured. Like I never saw that side of him. In and what for way? An injury to happen, just the, the side of him that dropped everything and was like, man, I'm about to be here and help my son. Mm. I hadn't seen that, right? Like we'll be with each other at certain sporting events, but I'd never seen that side of my father. It's like now watching my father and the grandfather that he is, right? And the father that I am. And now our relationship is phenomenal. But being able to watch him and see how he interacts with our kids, and this is what did it. A gentleman asked me a question one day, Jeffrey, and it convicted me, man. This is why I tell people often, man, get real people around you, yeah. right? Like people that challenge you, right? So this gentleman, he asked me a question one day this was when I was battling with, you know, my father. And we had gotten cool at this point, but I still wasn't tapping in with him like I should have been because I was so used to just not tapping in with him, right? And he asked me, he said, hey man, uh, you know how you used to resent your father, you know, for his shortcomings or being less than his best? I was like, yeah. He was like, what if your son treated you that way? Mm. He was like, how would you feel about that? Check the And he said, your father still worked to create a relationship with you. In spite of how you treated him, he still worked to create a relationship with you. What if your son treated you that way? Would you still be pressing to create a relationship with your son? Right, and it's just the conviction of the moment, mm -hmm. right? Because as people, what do we do? If somebody, somebody is less than their best, we often wanna hold people to the fire. Right, and we don't always seek to understand, even in a time period where they were less than their best, what were they dealing with? Mm -hmm. They could have been fighting with something. She could have been going through something, right? And so for me as a man, me and my father's relationship probably has been one of my greatest sources of growth as a man, as a husband, as a father. You know, even every relationship, even with my wife, my wife would push me back when she was my girlfriend then became my wife. She would push me to, hey, Patch it up with your father, man. Talk to your father, right? And so that, that forced growth in every aspect of my life. And I'm a better man for it. Love it. Absolutely. That's huge, man. Absolutely. Big so, time, man. What are some Bible quotes yeah, yeah. that changed your life and that convicted you and challenged you, right? Because yeah. there's a lot of quotes that sometimes we don't even live. <laughs> And we preach him sometimes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the quote that says, the greatest sermon, man, is how you live your life, yeah. not what you preach, right? Ooh. But, man, like, Jeremiah 29, 11 is my life first. Which for I know the plans I have for you to clear the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work to the good of those who love the Lord, who are called according to his will and his purpose. James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4 says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kind, because the testing of your faith goes on to produce perseverance, and perseverance must finish its race so that you may be complete and lacking nothing. That's probably the most challenging one. 
right? Because it says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, sister, when you face trials of many kinds. Yeah. And some trials, it's not easy to consider yeah. it pure joy, right? Some trials hurt, yeah. right? Some trials hurt the people we love. Yeah. And you're saying, consider it pure, pure joy. joy. Like, <laughs> nah, man. That's probably been the most challenging one. But so you're also understanding. Yeah, right, reading, reading that verse, you're going through those challenges yeah. and you're hearing those things. Consider it pretty joy, my brothers and sisters, yeah. whenever, whenever you face trials of many kind. Yeah. But the question, the question is, when somebody tells you to be thankful for something, the follow-up question, even if it's rhetorical, should be, why? Uh, like, why, why are they saying be thankful for persecution, be thankful for trials? Like, what's the purpose of it? Mm -hmm. Because that's not something that somebody would normally say, right. be thankful for it. And yeah. then it goes on to say what? Because the challenging time produces faith, Perfect. right? Yeah. Like all yeah. that stuff, man, it's like, it's, it's challenging, but it's rewarding yeah. in its own way. Yeah. yeah. How do you prepare for, for speaking engagements? What are some stuff that you do? How do you, how do you stay focused? How do you always adapt and, and still be a contribution to everybody? The biggest thing for me with speaking, man, is um, every opportunity I feel extremely grateful because I, I never, I never imagined, I never imagined that I would be doing what I'm doing. Like it never crossed my mind. Like people always think I'm joking when I'm saying it. I honestly, I never, if you'd have met me years ago, bro, and been like, hey, ain't speak, I'd be like, bro, beat it. You no, crazy. I'm <laughs> No, I never imagined. And so it trips me out, but it also gives me confirmation that God's plans are greater than our plans. Because if you would go and talk to people where I come from, and you would say to them, hey man, did you think Ink would be a speaker? Every last one of them would say, nope, he couldn't <laughs> talk, he's quiet, all of them. I guarantee you, every last one of them would say, no, not a shot. They tried to get me to speak at my banquet. I was like, bro, no, <laughs> right? And so to be able to do it, man, is it's rewarding. But also when somebody comes up to you and say, hey man, I showed this to my daughter. I showed this to my son. Hey man, thank you for the, what you said on that. Like that's extremely humbling mm -hmm. because nobody has to do that. Right. You don't have to watch my video. Nobody has to stop and watch a video of me and say, oh man, let me check out what this guy has said. Nobody has to do that. And so for somebody to do that and then take time to say something to you, that's extremely humbling. That's when you got to work, man. Love it. Thank you, man. I know that we're, we're short on time, but I wanted to take to say thank you, brother. You're the reason why I put this event together. Oh, I was sitting in the middle of the night and I'm like, man, I got to... I gotta put an event together. I gotta create value. I need to expose our, our company. Wow. And I'm like, who's the speaker? I had wrote, I shared earlier. I wrote this about three, four years ago uh, on my goals. I'm like, I wanna have an, an event. Inky Johnson is gonna be one of the keynote speakers. When I wrote it at the time, all the scarcity kicked in. Like, who are you to have Inky on, your, on an event? One, how are you gonna pack an event? Two, where are you going to get the resources? Mm. How are you going to be able to afford all that? Mm. That day, I don't know, something, uh, something hit me and I just got right away and I connected with your manager. I'm like, I took action. The scarcity kicked in, boom, I took more action. Wow. So I want to say thank you because, again, the reason why I call this event Go Heavy is despite everything that was showing up in our lives, we still kept going. We put wow. this event together to change people's lives and wow. you're here. It's inspired me. Thank you, brother. No, this Thank inspired you. me, man. Like, and, and like when we do things, right? I want to say this, and I'm going to land the plane with it, but when I used to first speak, right, and I would go to environments and I would speak, and I used to have a guy with me, and um, we would go places, and, you know, let's say I would go speak somewhere with some kids, and, like, middle school kids would want to take pictures, right? And I might be like, all right, I'm gonna take a picture with all the eighth graders. Right, it'd be a lot of kids, right? And so the guy that used to be with me, great guy, but he was a, he was a clock guy. 
all right, we're going in at 8.30. We need to be out by 9.15. We got to go here. Like he was a real clock guy, right? Which was cool sometimes, right? But sometimes the moment would lend for, all right, man, let's just do what we do, right? And he would always say, hey, Ink, man, like, like come on, man, like, we got to roll. Or, hey, man, let's not do that. Let's roll. And I would always say, like, man, is somebody, is somebody in there, not even a stage, what happens on a stage is great, but it's somebody that God is sending me there for. Like it's somebody, and I would always meet him, right? And I would know that's why God sent me here. I would always know, right? Wherever I would go across the country, and it still happens, I would meet a person and be like, got it, that's why God sent me here. It could be a 20,000 people arena. Now meet one person and know, yeah, the event was great, but one person, this is why God sent me here. And today, this event inspired me to take action in my life with some things that I have planned for 2023 that I needed to feel this, see this, and experience this. And this was for me just as much as it was for you, right? You wouldn't have known that, but I do, right? And so thank you for that, bro. Thank you, brother. I appreciate thank you. you, man. Like I said, man, you've checked me so many ways and you made me have a better relationship with my wife. One of the quotes that, that I heard on your, uh, on your videos, you're like, I don't want to be a public success and a private failure. Absolutely. Oh, man. Yeah. Sometimes I, I, that will stick in, in the shower, yeah. hit me, <laughs> conviction, oh, they will, they will challenge me, and I'm like, oh, freaking inky. Yeah. Oh, but he's right. And I thank you for that. Thank you, I thank you for that. Pleasure. Because True pleasure. True appreciate pleasure. you, brother. brother. Thank you so Thank much, you guys. Let's give it up for Inky. Tune into the next episode. This was this is amazing, man. I don't even know what to feel right now, but I'm just full of joy, grateful for God, grateful for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.